The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Fear, it may be said is a malignancy which, once the seed is sown in the human soul, spreads like a voracious and all-consuming fungus throughout the psyche, smothering it at last in death. No one knew this better than the justly celebrated author Robert Louis Stevenson. No one has ever expressed it more vividly, more frighteningly than he, in his story, The Suicide Club. Our mystery drama, The Suicide Club, was especially adapted from the Robert Louis Stevenson classic for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Barry Nelson. What is it? What is it within most of us, perhaps all of us, that compels us to do this or that? What drives the alcoholic to take that first drink he knows will lead to drunkenness and almost certainly eventual death? What spurs the compulsive gambler to bet again and again, aware always that in the end it can only bring him to ruin? That was a question Victor Harris often asked himself, but could never answer, until a certain fatal night when he met a man who called himself John Smith. Well, your health, Mr. Harris. Yours, Mr. Smith, I think you said. (laughs) That's good a name, is it, the other? Why did you invite me for this drink, Mr. Smith? It isn't customary, you know. More often than not, the strangers one meets at poker games remain strangers. Why? You interest me, Mr. Harris. In fact, you intrigue me. Oh. The last hand we played, everyone else had dropped out, leaving just you and me. I admired the way you played. I admired your nerve. More than anything else, I admired your coolness. Your indifference when you lost. $37,000, $37,000, Mr. Harris. $37,000. Your admiration is misplaced. Cool, indifferent, why not? $37,000 is nothing to me. I'm a millionaire, Mr. Smith. Oh, are you? Several times over. Well, then, losing that much would mean little to you, if anything at all. Where's the thrill in winning or losing? There isn't any. Not for me. Not anymore. Then what point is there in playing? None. None whatever. Gambling of any kind bores me. But I go on because... Well, Mr. Smith, I'm what is called a compulsive gambler. I see. What would you say if I were to tell you that I can change your boredom into a thrill the like of which you have never experienced before? There's a price tag, of course. What is the nature of this thrill that you're talking about? I'm talking about what might be called... The Supreme Gamble, Mr. Harris. The Supreme Gamble? Yes. <laughs> that sounds like a matter of life and death. It does, doesn't it? Is it? You're a gambler, Mr. Harris. And a compulsive gambler at that. I think you'll be willing to gamble an hour or two of your time to find out. Here's my card. I'll be expecting you at this address tomorrow night. 7.30 sharp. Suppose I don't show. Why, then, you'll never know what the supreme gamble is. And you'll go on being bored. Yes? My name's Harris. Victor Harris... I believe Mr. Smith is expecting me. Yes, he is. Come in. This way, Mr. Harrison. 
Mr. Victor Harris, sir. Thank you, Lucas. Good to see you again, Mr. Harris. We'll join you in a few moments, Lucas. This, Mr. Harris, is the game room. In this room, every night, Saturday and Sunday accepted, the supreme gamble takes place. But what is the supreme gamble? First, tell me what you see. Why, a room. Large room, tastefully and expensively decorated in 18th century style. And that large round table covered with a green cloth looks like a card table. That's what it is. The people in evening dress, men in black tie, women gown, all drinking champagne. Their faces. Look at their faces. Look closely. Well, what do you see? Why... Their faces, they're all of them excited about something I can see. Yes, they, they all look as if, well, as if they're expecting something very exciting to happen at any moment. They are. But not at any moment. Not until eight sharp. What happens at eight sharp? <laughs> that you'll find out at eight sharp. In the meantime, let me introduce you to one or two members of our club. Oh? It's a club? Yes. A very select club, Mr. Harris. Oh, Mr. Malthus, may I introduce Mr. Harris, a new member? How do you do? How do you do? Correction, though, I'm not a new member yet. <laughs> he will be, Mr. Malthus. He will be. Uh, see you a minute, Director. Of course, Lucas. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Lucas called Mr. Smith director. Yes. We all do. He's the director of our little club. I see. Uh, Mr. Malthus, what kind of club is this? You don't know? No. Then why are you here? To tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure, except... Well, Mr. Smith, your director, promises I'll experience the thrill of my life, the supreme gamble. He calls it. <laughs> it is that, Mr. Harris. These people, you, you're here because you like to gamble. Oh, no. No, no, not at all. I don't in the least like to gamble. No, I'm here because I'm a coward. A coward? What do you mean? Just that. I'm a coward. I'm afraid of... Well, I see you two have become acquainted. But I'll take our new guest away from you now, Malthus. I see Iris Lorne sitting all by herself as usual. Come along, Harris. I'll introduce you. Wish me luck tonight, Director. I do indeed, Malthus. I do indeed. Iris, let me introduce our latest member, Mr. Victor Harris. I'm not a member, Mr. Smith. Director... Call me director from now on. No offense, but I'll call you what I please until I am a member. If I am... I doubt that you will be, Mr. Harris. Why, Iris, what do you mean? Just what I say. He doesn't look like one of <laughs> us. Oh, but he is. In a different way, for a different reason. I'll leave you two together. I've got to prepare a fresh deck of cards. Uh, I don't think I got your... Last name, Miss, uh, or Mrs. Miss uh, Iris Lorne. Well, you said that I don't look like one of you. You don't. Where's the difference? Your eyes. In your eyes. <laughs> that seems to puzzle you, Mr. Harris. Look into my eyes. Look deep. What do you see? Sadness. Yes. Great. Sadness. The sadness of... Of... Death. Death? I'm dead, Mr. Harris. I've been dead for years. All right. I'm afraid I don't uh, understand. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, your attention. It is time. Gather around the table, please. Our director will now deal the cards. To Mr. Cranes, the two of hearts. 
to Mr. Shaw, the Eight of Diamonds. Mrs. Harper receives the Four of Clubs. Next card to Mr. Burke, the Nine of Spades. Miss Russell this time... to Mr. Wolfson, the ace of spades. Oh. Oh, this thing, hang on. Since Mr. Morley has already drawn the ace of clubs, the game is ended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wolfson, Mr. Morley, I will see you both in my office as soon as I've completed my business with Mr. Harris. This way, Mr. Harris. Oh, Lucas, champagne all around as usual. Yes, director. Harris. Drink? Thanks, no. Just tell me, what's this all about? Have you ever thought of committing suicide? No, I've never thought seriously of suicide. Well, many do, you know. Well, think of it seriously, that is. And some of these, quite a few, do take their own lives. But you'd be amazed, Mr. Harris, at how many people there are in the world who want to kill themselves. In fact, yearn to kill themselves, but haven't the nerve to do it. So, we do it for them. You, to put it more aptly, we arrange it for them once they become members of the club. The suicide club, we call it. Think of the gamble, Mr. Harris, the supreme gamble of your life. Think of the thrill of each night, staking your life on the turn of a card. Not a momentary thrill, but one that will make each day worth living because it may be your last. The ace of spades. The ace of clubs. Simple. Whoever in each nightly deal receives the ace of spades is killed. Everything, of course, is arranged to make his or her death appear accidental. The ace of spades. The person killed. The ace of clubs. The one who does the killing. Then one is the victim. The other... His murderer. Huh. You spoke uh, of a fee. Unnecessary evil, I'm afraid. The club's overhead is high, extremely high. Accordingly, so is the fee. Which is? Half your estate. Half of what you own. Half? That may sound unreasonable to you at first, but it all balances out, you see. What I mean is, there are members of the suicide club who have large estates, vast wealth. But at the other extreme, there are some who have virtually no estate, no money at all. Miss Lorne, for example. Iris, you met her. Practically penniless. She was quite well-to-do when she joined some time ago, but luck, the cards, has been against her. And in the meantime, she has spent everything she had on her habit. Drugs. She said... She's a drug addict. Which is why she wants to die. It's the only solution to her problem. What a shame. She's so lovely. Her life could be so worth living. But isn't. Not anymore. Well, now, Mr. Harris, I promised you the greatest thrill you've ever had. I promised to cure your boredom with life for the remainder of your life. I'm ready to keep that promise with, as I said last night, the supreme gamble. Sign here. I, uh... Yes? I, I'd like to think it over. You I... know what your decision will be. You're a compulsive gambler, Mr. Harris. Whether you join the suicide club now or later, you will join. I know it. You know it. To be bored is to be dead. As you so well know, why not live a little? Why not sign? Now? Why not? Yes. Why not? Compulsion, psychiatrists say, is another word for decision. Deep in the very core of his being, a person has made a decision that gambling, drinking, whatever may be ruining his life, is somehow necessary to his happiness. Well... We shall see when I return shortly with Act Two. Bored, weary of a 
life of compulsive gambling which has lost its stimulation, Victor Harris, wealthy man about town, has joined the Suicide Club. Other members have joined because they want to end their jaded lives but cannot bring themselves to do so, and so it must be done for them. Victor's reason is different. A gambler who cannot stop himself from gambling, he has decided to take the supreme gamble. His life on the turn of a card. Your first night, Harris. Bon chance. Good luck. I'm not uh, quite sure how to take that, Mr. Uh, beg pardon? Director. I'm staking my life on the turn of a card. I grant you I'm, I'm a compulsive gambler, but my life? I wasn't quite prepared for anything like that when I came here for the first time last night. I hope you're prepared now. We play in less than five minutes. Why not wander about, become better acquainted with your fellow members? I'll do that. Oh, and by the way, it's customary for new members to order champagne for everyone, no? Well, I'll be more than glad to. Lucas, champagne all around. On Mr. Harris. Yes, Director. See you at the table, Harris? Yes. Miss Lorne, may I join you? Oh, Mr. Harris, please do. So, you did join Yeah, even though you said that I wouldn't. I didn't say that. I said that you shouldn't. But even when I said it, you had no choice. No choice? <laughs> Once you accept our director's invitation to pay this place a visit, you've had it. There's no turning back. No way. Why not? You'll find out. I did. What do you mean? He doesn't run this place for kicks. Or maybe he does, in a way. But what he's really after is your money. And according to the grapevine, oh, <laughs> we have one here, too. You've got plenty. Well, according to the grapevine, you have none. You're penniless. Now, yes. I was worth well over a hundred thousand when I joined almost six months ago. And? Oh, well, a lot of it. I don't know how much. I, I don't keep count. Went for heroin. Well, of course you know I'm on dope. Yes. And I'm sorry. You? Sorry? <laughs> for me? You're hooked as badly as I am. On gambling, they say. I'm afraid that's the truth. A habit. You can't kick. Just as I can't kick mine. Look, Miss Lauren, Iris, if I may. I made a decision to join the suicide club last night. I can make the decision to leave it, too. Can you? Well, of course I can. Why do you say, uh... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. It is time. Gather around the table, please. Our director will now deal the card. The tray of spades to Mr. Dowling. For you, Mrs. Cranes, the four of clubs. For Mr. Malthus. For Mr. Malthus, the ace of spades. Oh. I've won at last. Mr. I've Malthus. Won. I've won. Mr. Malthus, remember the club rules. Control, Mr. Malthus. But I won. This will be my last night on earth. After all this time, my last night. Mr. Malthus. I beg pardon, Director. I truly beg pardon. Let us go on. Mr. Robinson, eight of diamonds. Miss Fightson, two of spades. Mr. Whalen, nine of hearts. Mr. Harris. Ah, Mr. Harris, your first supreme gamble. Yes. What card shall it be, do you think? Here it lies on top of the deck. What shall it be? Well, it can't be the ace of spades. True. Well, what is it? I don't know. I haven't looked. Enjoy yourself, Mr. Harris. Feel, feel the excitement of not knowing. 
Live. Live. The supreme thrill of wondering. What is this next card? Turn it. Why don't I put it aside and draw the others? Turn that card. As you wish. It's a club, Mr. Harris. The ace of clubs. Oh, Mr. Malthus, Mr. Harris, you will join me in my office in five minutes. I'm no murderer. You wanted a thrill. You're about to find, I'm afraid. Be seated, please. You there, Mr. Malthus. <coughs> Mr. Harris, here. Uh, when shall it be, Director? When is my moment to come? How shall it be done? And where? Patience, Mr. Malthus. Patience. Your uh, suicide will take place tonight at approximately 10.30. Is that satisfactory? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Good. Now, here are your instructions and a map to go along with them. This straight line represents the Uptown Express platform of the IRT subway at 42nd Street. Yes. This arrow indicates the direction from which the Uptown Express train will come into the mm -hmm. station. Mm -hmm. At 10.30 tonight, you are to stand at precisely this spot that I've marked with an X. <laughs> X marks the spot. Mm. Yes. Now, the platform will be filled with the after-theater crowd. You will take up your position at this spot and stand at the very edge of the platform. Clear? Very. Goodbye, Mr. Malthus. And Godspeed. Goodbye, and thank you for all you've done. And now, Mr. Harris? I have no intention of going through with this. I'm no murderer. Of course not. When you push Malthus in front of that train, you'll not be murdering him. You'll be doing him a service. Like all our members, he wants to die, but he hasn't the nerve to kill himself. You will simply be doing it for him. And that, as I see it, is not murder. I see it differently. That's too bad, Mr. Harris. I'm sorry, but frankly, there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, I think there is. I'm resigning from your club right now. Goodbye. Mr. Harris, no one resigns from the suicide club. No one ever has. No one ever will. I couldn't possibly run that risk. You have my assurance that I'd never say a word about it. Assurance, assurances. What are assurances to me? No, Mr. Harris, there's only one assurance you can give me that I can possibly accept. Your death. Or, more properly, your suicide. This is madness. Perhaps. But if it is, it's only another form of madness, Mr. Harris. Like, say, uh, compulsive gambling. Uh, I won't argue with you further. No, you won't. I've had enough of your argument. You know what you have to do tonight. You know where and when. Do it. I... Do it, Mr. Harris. Or if you don't, I promise you'll wish you had. And as you already know, I keep the promises I make. Mr. Malthus. Mr. Malthus? What? Mr. Harris, you're just in time. The express will be along in a minute or two. Listen to me. We really shouldn't be seen talking together. Just stand behind me, and when the right moment comes... Listen to me. I'm not going to kill you. You're not? I can't. Well, you must. I can't do it either. Why do you think you're here? To save you if I can. Wait, save me. You don't want to do this. You don't really want to take your life. You're crazy. Of course I want to do it. But I can't. I haven't the nerve. You must do it. You must. No. No, we'll go somewhere and talk. Talk? The, tr the train. You can see the lights far down in the tunnel. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, you will do it, won't you? I can. I've got to get away from here. I've got to get away. Victor? Victor Harris. Harris. What are you doing here? I followed you. Why? Because I had this... <laughs> on the nerve to do it himself. No, Mr. Harris, I didn't. You? Lucas, you shoved him? The director figured you'd lose your nerve. It happens sometimes, and when it does, <laughs> I take over. Well, see you 
And you, Miss Lorne, at the club tomorrow night. Eight sharp, as usual. You've got it wrong, Lucas. You won't see me tomorrow night or any other night. You got it wrong, Mr. Harris. If you don't show up tomorrow night, there won't be any other night. Not for you or Miss Lorne. As Victor Harris watches Lucas vanish quickly into the crowd, surely he begins to realize what his compulsion to gamble has brought him to. To what? Why, to certain death, wouldn't you say? I would. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. to my voice are Victor Harris, or, depending on gender, Iris Lorne. If you are Victor, you join the Suicide Club for a thrill. If you are Iris, you join because you were sick of life and wanted someone to do for you what you could not do for yourself, commit suicide, kill you. But whether you are Victor or Iris, you begin to wonder if you've made a mistake a fatal mistake, now that it's too late. And so now, Victor, Iris, you are in a secluded cocktail lounge. Iris, I... I don't understand. What more can I say? I've made it plain enough. I followed you, Victor, because I... I couldn't bring myself to believe you'd kill Mr. Malford. And intended to stop me if I tried. Now, that, that's what I... I don't understand. Why did you intend to stop me? Well, you won't believe me. Try me. I love you. I told you you wouldn't believe me. Well, it is a, a little hard to believe. We, we only met last night. In fact, we we haven't spent much more than, well, 20 minutes at most in each other's company. Well, how long does it take to fall in love? I, uh, I don't know. I do. I found out when I met you last night. You don't believe me, do you? I, I believe you mean what you say, but... But what? Look, we're both compulsive personalities. With me, it's gambling. With you, drugs. That means neither of us is totally in control of ourselves. I love you, Victor Harris. It's as simple as that. And that's all there is. I love you. Well, I... I'm honored. I, and flattered. Iris, I mean that. I, But I, I'm afraid I don't feel the same way about you. Well, that's all right. No. No. It isn't all right. I wish... I wish... Oh, well, what's the sense of talking about what I wish or don't wish or anything? We're in trouble, Iris. Real trouble. And what we'd better start talking about is how to get ourselves out of it if we can. Do you think we can? We can sure try. We'd better try. It's that or death. Waiter, check, please. What are you going to do? The only thing I can do. Go to the police. Well, Lieutenant, that's the whole story. Mm-hmm. You don't sound as if you believed us, Lieutenant. Tell me something, Miss Long. How long you've been mainlining? Mainlining? You know what I mean? It's written all over you. Your eyes, the nose twitching, the long sleeve dress. Pull up that sleeve and let's have a look. It's no need. It's true. Okay. What about you? Me? What are you on? Uppers, downers, masculine? I'm not on anything. I'm no drug addict. Look, Lieutenant. Sounds like a pipe dream. A suicide club. Uh, Mr. Harris, I've heard some far-out stories, but yours is... It's out of space. I see. In other words, you don't intend to do anything. We'll uh, check it out, but uh, word of advice? Yes? You and her. Kick the habit and try to get your feet back down on Earth. Huh? Go to my place. Oh, we're staying right here in this church till I oh. figure out our next move. I've got to, 
the sex I'm going out of my skull. It's that bad. Oh, you, you just don't know. Vic, I've been almost 24 hours without one. We've been running all day. Central Park, Radio City Music Hall, now this church. We couldn't go to my place or yours. The director, Lucas, they should be looking for us. I can't stand it. I can't. You don't have to, Miss Law. What? Lucas. I'm right here in the pew behind you, Mr. Harris. Here, Miss Lorne. It's just a skin pop, but it'll hold you to me. Oh, give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, no. I... Something wrong. Not in a church. I won't. Not in a church. <laughs> Suit yourself. Let's go. The director is waiting. You heard me, you two. Come on, Iris. An Iris. Yes. Yeah. Good girl. Mr. Harris and Miss Lorne, director. Come in, come in. I was a bit worried about you two. Going to the police, revealing all about our intimate little club. How do you know that we... Had a visit today from a Lieutenant McPhee. He didn't mention you by name, but I have reason to suspect you know him. Big fellow, 6'2", shoulders like an ox. And not very bright, I'm afraid. Not very bright at all. Lucas showed him about. I couldn't be bothered. Lucas, tell them what happened. Nothing happened. I showed him around. Just a private residence. What else? As you say, what else? Well, now, champagne for you, Mr. Harris. And this for you, Miss Lorne. I don't want your champagne. And she doesn't want that. Do you, Iris? Why not? Why shouldn't I? I'm dying for it. Then here, my dear. Iris, no. Oh, Vic. Iris, no. Please. I'll do. I can't help myself. I'm all alone. I've been alone and I need... I need something to comfort me. Come here. Into my arms. Come. Oh, Vic. Come. I'll comfort you, my darling. I'll comfort you. Well, well, how touching. How all together. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this since the, since the suicide club opened. Have you, Lucas? No. No, I haven't. However, life must go on. Or to be precise, death. And it is time for our evening ritual. Come, Miss Lorne, Mr. Harris. Our little game of cards awaits us. Mr. Dowling, the Five of Diamonds. Mr. Whalen, the Nine of Hearts. Mrs. Lawton, the Ace of Diamonds. Mr. Whalen, the Deuce of Spades. For Miss Lorne, Iris, the Ace of Clubs. Oh, oh Victor! Oh, steady. Oh. For Miss Fison, the Eight of Hearts. Mr. Hanson, the Ten of Hearts. For Mr. Harris, the Ace of Spades. Oh. Oh. That ends the play for this evening. Miss Lorne and Mr. Harris will join me in my office, please. Victor, I feel sick. I think, I think I'm going to say... Miss Lorne, wait. Where are you going? To the powder room, you fool. She's sick. Mrs. Lawton, do what you can for her. In my office, Mr. Harris. Well, now, Mr. Harris. It appears that Dame Fortune has frowned on you tonight. Regrettably, you have just experienced the final gambling thrill of your young life. You arranged it, didn't you? We, you felt it. Now, now. Manners, Mr. Harris. No name-calling, please. Smith, you're not going through with this. Oh, yes. I don't intend to die tonight or any other night for a long, long time. I'm resigning from this insanity you call a club. And so is Miss Lorne. You know, really, if I hadn't the slightest idea you were going to be this wearisome, I'd not have let you join in the first place. I have already told you that we have but one form of resignation from the suicide club. Death. Well, let me just tell you... Enough. Your instructions are to leave here immediately and return to that elegant penthouse apartment of yours. 
<laughs> Go to your apartment and stay there. And oh yes, if you have any idea of seeking help, such as going to the police or anything of that nature, don't. You will be very closely watched from the moment you leave. And any attempt to disobey my orders will result not only in your death, but Iris Lawrence as well. <laughs> What can we do? Your instructions. Just, just how are you to kill me? Kill you? I could never kill you. You know that. But what instructions? Just to come here and wait. That was all. That settles it. They're going to kill us both. What makes you think? I was followed until I got here. The first thing I did was to call the police or try to. The phone's dead. I had a gun in my desk drawer. It's gone. They'd been here, and they didn't miss a trick. And now, just telling you to wait. Horace, oh, we're trapped. Oh, dear Lord. Hang on now. We're going to the police. Oh, we'll never get there. I was followed here, just as you were. They're watching our every move. We can give it a try. It's a gamble. Oh, they got... I just lost. God, what are we going to do? What can we do? We won't answer. No, that won't do any good. They've got a key. I'm sure. Now, look. Look, there's just one chance. You answer the door. I'll stand behind it. And, well, Lord knows I'm not much when it comes to fighting, but I can try. Go ahead. Open it. Thank you, Miss Long. <laughs> I was just about to use my key. Okay, I come in? I can't stop you, Lucas. No, you can't. And how about you coming out from behind the door, Mr. Harris? <laughs> it wouldn't have done you any good anyhow. You're no match for me. It might have been worth a try. The director has given me his orders, and I'm here to carry them out. Everything can be done fast and easy if you cooperate. And if we don't, don't give me a hard time, Mr. Harris, please. You got the ace of spades tonight. Miss Lorne got the ace of clubs. Following the club rules, Miss Lorne kills you. And this time we make sure it looks like suicide. I won't do it. I won't do it. You'll do it. Oh, there's going to be one little change, one little difference tonight. After you kill Mr. Harris, <laughs> after he commits suicide, you might say, you're going to commit suicide too. What do you mean? Let's all go into the kitchen and find out. Why the kitchen? That's where the stove is. The gas stove. Oh, no. Oh, no. Move, no. Miss Lorne. Look, Lucas, look, you're being stupid. One suicide, the police will buy that. But two... You never heard of a suicide pact between lovers? <laughs> says so right here. See? What? That's the suicide note you're leaving. See, it's typed, but signed, Iris Lauren, Victor Harris. No signatures. How did they... They forged them. The contracts we signed. Just put the note on the table there, hmm? <laughs> no, no, no. Don't just toss it there. Fold it. Neatly and... Oh, oh you... Oh. One chop at the back of the neck. Oh. He'll be out a long time. In fact, he won't be coming back. Oh. And now, Miss Lorne, turn on the gas. No! Miss Lorne... I won't do it! I can't... Oh. Uh, let's see now. Drag her into his arms. Put his arm around her. Like so. Uh, good. All we need now is the gas. Oh. Oh. Okay, Eddie, he's coming around. <coughs> Feed her again with the oxygen. Mm. Okay, Mr. Harris, snap uh, out of it. Uh, Come on now. What? Where, where? Breathe deep. Come on now. Deep. Ah, boy. Out the way. Iris. She's coming around fine. Gonna be okay, just like you. Lieutenant McPhee, huh? Yeah. Well, how did you? <laughs> I'm not as dumb as I look or act, Mr. Harris. I kind of put it on, you know, an act. Throw a lot of characters off their guard that way. Smith. Didn't fool you. No, I fooled him. When that guy Lucas took me on a tour of the house, I saw a lot more than he thought I saw. Well, what could you have seen? That big round table in the middle of the room. Oh, there was a 
a vase of flowers on it and like that, but there's a circle worn on the rug around the table, and nobody admires flowers that much, Mr. Harris. Oh, and oh, yeah, I uh, checked the sanitation boys and heard about the dozens and dozens of empty champagne bottles they picked up three times a week. All that, plus the accidental death of Mr. Malthus, as you described it. Oh, sure, I checked on that, of course. Well, it all added up. You, uh, you had us followed. You and the lady have been tailed practically since you left headquarters. <gasps> okay, Eddie, she's had enough. <gasps> Come on, little lady. <gasps> Come on. Come on now. What? Oh, Victor. Iris. Oh. Iris. She's going to be okay. Oh. Oh, by the way, Mr. Harris, you'll be glad to know we got a confession out of Lucas and Smith. And that's the end of the Suicide Club. Uh, it's the end of something else, too. Yeah? What? My compulsive gambling. I'll never make another bet as long as I live. <laughs> Victor Harris never did gamble again. The suicide club cured him of that. And, oh yes, it cured Iris Lorne of drug addiction. Although I'm not so sure it wasn't having someone to live for, someone to love. They're married now. I'll be back shortly. and Iris Lorne discovered, out of weakness can come strength. Out of death, life. And compulsion is nothing more nor less than, as I said earlier, a decision we make within ourselves. We can decide for evil or for good. But it is always we who decide. Our cast included Barry Nelson, Marion Seldes, John Barragray, Dan Ako, and Lloyd Batista. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Station KIXI Dial ninety one AM Seattle. CBS News. After three tries, John Glenn has won the Democratic nomination for Senate in Ohio. I'm Ann Crosman, reporting on the CBS Radio Network. John Glenn has won the Democratic primary in Ohio. With nearly 60% of the vote counted, Glenn is running ahead of his opponent, Howard Metzenbaum, by 14% of the vote. Metzenbaum had been appointed interim senator when William Saxby resigned to become attorney general. We have a report from Ike Pappas on Metzenbaum's reaction to defeat. Senator Howard Metzenbaum had no words of congratulation for John Glenn when he spoke to his campaign workers this morning. Metzenbaum had just lost the Democratic senatorial nomination in Ohio to the former astronaut, but he stubbornly refused to say that he would support Glenn in the November election against Republican Ralph Perk, the mayor of Cleveland. The people of Ohio have now spoken. We accept that decision gracefully, have no regrets, and uh, the campaign is over. Thank you very much. Metzenbaum issued no concession statement, asked if he had called John Glenn, and obviously annoyed Metzenbaum replied, I don't even know his number. Mike Pappas, CBS News, Cleveland. In the Democratic primary in Alabama, Governor George Wallace easily won renomination for an unprecedented third term. With half the vote counted, Wallace is leading his closest opponent by more than 30% of the vote.
President Nixon says he will not give any more Watergate tapes, either to the House Judiciary Committee or to Special Watergate Prosecutor Leon Jaworski. Committee Chairman Peter Rodino is not commenting on that action. But many committee Democrats are saying they should subpoena the additional Watergate-related tapes and documents they asked for two weeks ago. Committee member Jerome Waldy, a Democrat, was asked if he believes the president's role in Watergate has hurt his efficiency. I think the president's concentration in attempting to avoid the truth coming out in Watergate has prevented him from being able to govern. But most seriously, I think, is the fact that the confidence of the people has been withdrawn from the president because they now know that the president's involvement in Watergate is serious and total. And I think until such time as the Judiciary Committee and the Congress completes the constitutional process of impeachment, the country will be at a standstill. Democratic Congressman Jerome Waldy, who is a member of the House Judiciary Committee. The Navy says that a Trident missile blew up during a test last Sunday in Bacchus, Utah, but that no one was hurt. There was a lot of damage to the test area. The Trident missile is scheduled to be installed on existing Poseidon nuclear missile submarines and on new Trident missile subs. The Trident sub program has been criticized by some senators who say the $1 billion price tag for each sub is too much and that the subs are not needed. You won't have to worry about changing inches to centimeters or pounds to kilograms, at least for a while. The House of Representatives has defeated a bill to set up a board which would have, to come, which would have to come up with a voluntary plan to convert to the metric system. Backers of the bill claim that many of the country's industries, including General Motors, already use the metric system and that the United States is one of the few remaining countries not measuring in metric units. People who object to the bill charge that it would cost between $60 billion and $100 billion to convert to the metric system. I'm Ann Crosman, CBS News.